Hi, I'm Brandon Grant, Sales and Marketing Director here at Quoteworks. Today we're going to demonstrate how Quoteworks integrates with Salesforce.com. Before we begin, there's a few notes to mention about the integration. First, the integration between Quoteworks and Salesforce.com is available in Quoteworks Professional and Corporate Editions. Additionally, Quoteworks integrates with Salesforce Professional, Enterprise, and Unlimited versions. Quoteworks also supports both the Lightning Experience and Salesforce Classic, and Quoteworks Web includes the Salesforce integration at no additional cost. So let's get started. So in this video, we're really focusing on how the integration between Quoteworks and Salesforce.com works. So we're going to walk through a typical workflow of using Quoteworks and the Salesforce.com integration so we can demonstrate the various integration points. So the first thing we want to do is in Quoteworks, we want to click on our Sold to Ship to tab. Go ahead and click on the magnifying glass. This will bring up the Lookup Salesforce.com contact window. This will allow us to search by account name, last name, or phone number. For our example, I'm gonna search by account name, and I'm gonna type in Aspire Technologies. Then I could either click enter on my keyboard or click on the find button, and that will return my results. Once you've found the record you're looking for, simply highlight it and click on the sold to button to pull that contact into the sold to fields. You'll also see there's another field available for ship to and also one for bill to. This is if you need to populate the ship to and bill to fields with the same or a different contact or address. For our example, we're going to use the same contact for all three. So instead of clicking them individually, I can also use the all button to populate that contact. When you pull in a contact from Salesforce, you'll see a shortcut icon will display. This is a display contact and contact manager. This will actually take you directly to that contact in Salesforce. So it's a nice little shortcut for having access to that contact details. Once you have your contact, we can go ahead and move back to our document items tab. And this is where we can start building our document. So the first thing we want to do is right click in our window here and select the option for insert section header. Section headers are optional, but they're a great way to organize your document in Quoteworks. So for example, if I wanted to list out for my customer all the products that I'm going to be selling, I could create a new section header called products. And if I wanted to do one for services, we can do that as well. And we'll do one more and we'll say it's for any optional items that we might include. The section headers, like I said, are a great way to organize your document in Quoteworks. They can be specific to what you sell and what you're offering. So you could call it maybe different rooms, different phases of a project, different locations. However you want to organize these, you can do so. Now that we have our section headers, let's go ahead and click on our products icon. This is going to open up our product lookup window. And the product lookup window is where we can pull items for our document. You can import a price list directly into Quoteworks and manage the item list here as it'll show up as one of the databases on your left hand side. We can also link directly to the Salesforce price list. So if you've already set up your items in Salesforce and you simply want to link directly to those, we can do that as well. So we'll demonstrate the Salesforce price list first. When you select the Salesforce price list, you'll be able to search by the item name or part number, however is easiest for you. So for example, if you sell Cisco items and you have them in your price list, we could type in Cisco and click enter on my keyboard or find, and that will return all items that have Cisco in that item name. To select an item, simply highlight the item or double click on it to bring up the add item assistant to add it to the document. The Add Item Assistant allows you to make some minor changes to the item before adding it to the document. So you can update the quantity, change the prices, check price history. So if you've ever sold this particular item to this customer, you would see that here. And check price history for this item. So if you've ever sold this item, you would see that information here. And then finally, we can add it to our document. You can also select multiple items at once. So if you wanted to select this item, then hold control on your keyboard and select three more items, you can do that. And as you'll see in the background here, our items are appearing on our document. 
If you decide to import a price list into QuoteWorks and manage it inside of QuoteWorks, that's fine too. You can click on your database name and you'll see you'll be able to search by a variety of fields to make it really easy to locate the item that you're looking for. So we're just gonna add a few more items to our document to finish building it out. And as you can see, you can mix and match between the databases. So whatever databases you set up in QuoteWorks for your items, you'll be able to pick and choose from any of them to add to a document in QuoteWorks. Once you're done adding items to your document, simply close out of the product lookup window. This will bring you back to the document items tab. And you'll see here we have a list of our items. Now we can edit and maneuver these items around as needed. So for example, if I wanted to move this item to our product section, I can simply drag and drop it. Here's our labor item. I want to move that to under services. And then I'm just going to delete this extra item here. And then we have our optional items. So by utilizing drag and drop, we can quickly and easily make those modifications. Additionally, if you double click in the description field for an item, you can see the entire items description. So if you want to make any changes to this customer facing description, you can do that. You also have the option of adjusting the price, your costs, and even price modifiers, which is how you mark up the items. One of the really great features in QuoteWorks is the ability to utilize line attributes. Line attributes for your items essentially define what type of line they are in QuoteWorks. So if you highlight a single or multiple line items and right click, you'll see there's an option that says edit line attributes. When you click on that, that'll open up the line attributes window. And this is where you can set attributes such as if the item is optional, yes or no. So if you want the item to be optional, if you want to hide the price or hide quantities, exclude lines, print lines. So if you're using groups and you want the ability and the functionality to be able to hide prices and hide individual items in groups, you have that functionality here. We can even set items as recurring. So if you're offering items as weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annual, you can actually set that up in QuoteWorks and QuoteWorks will break that down for you as well. Once you've made your changes, simply click OK and they will be applied in your document. In addition to the line attributes, there's a lot of other functionality for your line items. If you right click, you'll see there's options to insert section headers, which we talked about, adding additional heading lines, adding blank lines to your document, comments, formulas, discounts, subtotals, running subtotals. There's quite a bit of functionality here. We also have the option to convert items to groups. So if you want to sell items as groups or bundles or kits, we can support that also. Okay, so we've built our quote, we made some adjustments, we can now move to the next step, which is saving our document. The save is obviously very important because you want to save your work, but this is also what's going to trigger the integration with Salesforce. So first things first, well, we want to give our document a name. So it's going to be the company that we're selling to and today's date. That's the default setting for this, but you can make any changes or modifications that you need. The doc number will be assigned automatically, so you don't have to worry about tracking complicated document numbers. We'll number these documents for you. Status will be set as open, so that means the document or the quote is available, it's open, it's out there. Project number is really useful if you're creating quotes for multiple projects. You have the option of assigning project numbers, otherwise one will just be assigned automatically. And then down to the Salesforce integration. So this is where we can actually create or attach to a Salesforce opportunity and also create a follow-up call to make sure that you remember to actually follow up on this activity in Salesforce. So everything looks good. Let's go ahead and click OK. So the first thing is you'll see that our document has now been saved and assigned a QuoteWorks quote number. Next, QuoteWorks will prompt you to create a new Salesforce opportunity. This is the typical workflow where you would create the opportunity from QuoteWorks in the Salesforce. However, if you had already created an opportunity as like a placeholder and you want to link this document to that opportunity, you can click on the drop down and QuoteWorks will display a list of opportunities associated for that contact and you can link to that opportunity instead. Just keep in mind if you do that, QuoteWorks takes ownership so it'll essentially wipe out what's in the opportunity and replace it with the information here. So just something to keep in mind. For our example, we're gonna go ahead and just create a new blank opportunity in Salesforce. This will be the name of the opportunity. You can see it's our document name plus our document number. So if you wanted to change anything, maybe we'll just take out the date since the date will already be in there, but we'll have our customer name and then also our document number. 
We can also set the contact role, close date expected, so we'll say we expect in two weeks, what stage we're at, we're at the decision makers, our probability, any notes that you want to add in the description field, currency, and what price book you want Quoteworks to write items from the opportunity into. So for ours, we want to choose the gold price book, write products into that opportunity, and click OK. If you leave this unchecked, then the line items will not carry over to Salesforce. If you want these items to be written into your opportunity in Salesforce, just make sure you have that checkbox checked, and then click OK. Once it creates the opportunity in Salesforce, you'll then be prompted to create the follow-up call in Salesforce. You can see here, again, we're gonna use the document name and we'll go ahead and we'll just remove the date since we don't need that. And then you can choose who it's gonna be assigned to. Your user will be the default, the due date. So maybe we wanna follow up on Tuesday of next week and we can set a priority and we'll say this is high and any comments maybe you want to include something about what was quoted in here for a reminder and then you can set a reminder for yourself on tuesday to go ahead and call them at we'll say 3 30 and then click ok and then that'll create that reminder for you in salesforce so now that we have created our opportunity and our follow-up, we could deliver the document to the customer. That would be the typical workflow, but we want to talk about the integration first. So in Quoteworks, if you click on this links tab, once you've created the opportunity in Salesforce, you'll actually see these various links. We call these auto links and these are automatically generated for you. And they're shortcuts from Quoteworks to the opportunity, to the contact, to the call, directly to Salesforce. So if we click on view opportunity in Salesforce, that will bring us directly to this opportunity. So we can actually see this opportunity and all the information that came from it. And if we scroll down, we'll see all our line item information. We can see our open activity. We have that call scheduled. We have our document attachments, we have the contact roles set, all this information is in here as well as the stage history. So the opportunity will be created just like if it was created manually in Salesforce, we're just automating that process for you. Additionally, you'll see you can go directly to that call or to the contact, or if you're using Quoteworks Web, you can actually open this document in Quoteworks Web itself. Okay, everything looks good, so let's go ahead and send this document to the customer. So we're gonna click on our deliver icon, this is where we're going to build what the output of the document is going to look like. So we're going to start at the top left here, select a cover page. So if you want to include a cover page for your quote or proposal, you can select one from one of the drop down options that you've set up. On the layout tab, this is what the line item information is going to look like. I'm just going to use my standard quote galaxy layout here. And then for my additional, I'm going to go ahead and choose to include my solution summary so I can give the customer a summary of what's being purchased. Literature documentation would be any additional documentation you want to include with your quote or proposal. So if you have a support agreement, a services contract, terms and conditions, warranty information, really anything that you want to include with this quote or proposal that's pretty standard, you can select from these options here. So let's, let's select our support agreement. If you have any spec sheets, they'll be available as well. I don't have any in my installation. And then if you have anything on your links tab that we talked about earlier, you can have that there. The links tab is where you can also include additional documentation. So if you have one-off documentation that you wanna to link to this quota proposal, you can select those options here. As you make your selections, you'll see them here in the selections panel. And if you wanna move them around, you can select one of the options and use the up and down arrows to kind of reorder them and how they're going to be created. So everything looks good. We're ready to send this to the customer. So the first thing you always wanna do, you always wanna preview your document before you send it to the customer. So let's click on preview. So the preview window will open and this will display what your PDF document's gonna look like. And we'll just zoom in a little bit so it's a little easier to see here. But we have our cover page and then we have our next page which is kind of like an introduction. And then we get into the line item information where we had our products, services, optional sectional headers. And so it makes it really easy for the customer to see what they're purchasing as well as the price breakdown. We also have our summary page, which will show their initial investment, if they have any recurring charges, anything like that, shipping, tax, anything that's been added, anything that's gonna be billed monthly, quarterly, or yearly, that will be broken out for them as well. And then we have our support agreement, which just includes a contract information, but this could also be anything else that you've added from that literature tab. 
So everything looks good, so we're ready to send this document to the customer. Now you can send the PDF document if you'd like, but we typically send our documents using Quote Valet. So what I'm going to choose to do is select Upload to Quote Valet. And Quote Valet is the online delivery engine for QuoteWorks. So instead of sending the customer a static PDF of the document, we're actually going to send them a dynamic web page that they can view electronically and even sign and accept. So we're up to our Upload Quote to Quote Valet page. We want to select our customer facing option here, choose Upload. And then you want to always preview the document before you send it to the customer. So you want to make sure it looks okay. So we'll click on preview. And here's an example template of what Quote Valet could look like for you. You could add your own logo, your own banner, change the company colors, change fonts, all of that. We do also include a copy of the PDF available so that they can download that and have a hard copy if needed. But one of the really great features of Quote Valet and my personal favorite is that the document becomes dynamic, whereas a PDF, it's a very static document that no changes can be made from the customer side of things. The client actually has options. So for instance, our optional items here, the client can actually deselect these options, click update, and it'll update that total. So it's a really, really nice and powerful feature to have. You can even set it up where the customer can change quantities on all the items or just specific items so they can increase or decrease the account that they need. Once the customer has viewed the document, you'll also see they have payment options that you've set up. So you can choose how you wanna accept payment for this, including credit card, ACH, PayPal, wire transfer, or custom options such as they pay by being invoiced or they have net 30 or something like that. So you can set that up. And when they're ready to accept, they can actually agree to the terms and conditions and then sign off on the document. Or if they have questions, they can post questions here. One of the really great things about Quote Valley is that you'll be able to see when your customer views the document, when they accept it, when they make payment. So let's go ahead and have our customer accept it. So they're gonna to agree to the terms and conditions. They're gonna put in a PO number. And they're ready to move forward. And then we'll click to accept. And this brings us to the acceptance screen where we can see that the document has been accepted and then if you click on the pay now button, if you've set up payment options in QuoteWorks, the customer can then be brought to a payment screen where they can put in their credit card information, or if you're giving them the option for ACH or a different payment option, they can select that payment option instead and actually put in their, in this case, their banking information. So a lot of flexibility with receiving payments. Now, once your document has been accepted in Quote Valley, if we go back to QuoteWorks, the next time you open this document in QuoteWorks, you'll be notified that the customer selected options or ch made changes to the document. Your QuoteWorks document will be automatically updated with those changes to keep it in sync. And then if they have accepted or made payment or both, you'll actually be prompted to convert this quote to an order. Converting the quote to an order in QuoteWorks allows you to update that opportunity in Salesforce as one, ensuring that your forecasting in Salesforce remains accurate and up to date with what's going on from your sales team. So we'll go ahead and click OK here. That will turn our quote to an order since it's now been accepted and then now we'll be prompted to update that opportunity in Salesforce as one. So you'll see the close existing Salesforce opportunity. We're gonna mark it as one. So at this stage, we wanna mark it as close one. Our close date is actually gonna to be today. Our probability 100%. Everything looks good there. So let's go ahead and click OK. And that'll update that opportunity, ensuring that everything is proper. So any items that were deselected, any quantities that were changed, any negotiated prices that happen, those are all being re-pushed out to that Salesforce opportunity, updating it and then marking it as one. And that's it. It's that easy to use QuoteWorks with Salesforce.com. The integration is very easy to set up. We have a video that'll walk you through that. And the integration, as you can see, is seamless. For more information on the QuoteWorks integration with Salesforce.com, please see the QuoteWorks help file topic on this particular integration. Or if you have questions, feel free to give us a call or send us an email. We're always happy to help. Thanks for watching.